To get started, you can head over to aws.amazon.com slash free. Here you can create a free account. However, the Oracle RDS is not available under the always free tier. So to see what's available for free, you can select the always free option and then browse the available services. So for the databases, the ones that are free are MySQL, Postgre, MariaDB and SQL Server. So just select create account to create your account. When creating your account, it will ask you for your credit card. However, I have an existing account, so I'm going to sign in. Once you're logged in, you'll be landed on the dashboard. In the search box, you can search for RDS. However, I recently visited, so I'm going to select the RDS tab. Once you're on this dashboard, select create database. In order to customize the settings that you want for your database, select the standard create option, then select Oracle. For the database management type, you can go between the RDS or the RDS custom. The RDS custom gives you access to the operating system. You can choose between standard or enterprise edition. I'll be going with the standard edition. So in this case, I'll be going with bring your own license. And for the database engine, I'll be going with the default. For the templates, if you are creating a production database, then definitely go with the production option. In this case, I'll be going with the dev test. Then here you can specify an identifier for your DB. So I'll be calling this MRDB. For the credential settings, you can change it from admin to whatever you like. You can also manage the master password in AWS Credentials Manager. I'm going to select auto generate password. For the instance configuration, you have the option to choose between the three DB classes. I'll be keeping the default as the standard DB classes and I'll be reducing the amount of CPU that I'll be using. For the storage type, I'm going to be going with the general purpose GP2. The minimum amount of storage you can allocate is 20 gigabytes. So I'll be going with 20 gigabytes. You have the option to enable auto scaling. I don't want that for this tutorial. And for availability and durability, you can create a multi-AZ deployment. So this will be ideal if you are creating a production database, it can create a standby for your database. So for connectivity, I don't want to connect to an EC2 compute resource. For the network type, it's IVP4. And for this tutorial, I'm going to enable public access. However, in your environment, you don't want to do this. You want to ensure that you have a site-to-site -site VPN in place. For the VPC group, you may not have any in place, so you can create one. So here, I'll be keeping my existing. For the availability zone, I'll be selecting US2A. And for additional configuration, you can specify your DB port. For your database authentication method, you have the option to choose between password authentication or password and Kerberos authentication. For the performance insight, you have pretty much a 7 day free trial on the free tier. I'm going to uncheck this option. So the estimated monthly cost for this database is 127 US dollars. Select create database to proceed. To get a hold of your credentials, you need to view credential details. So let's select the DB. On this dashboard, you'll get an overview of the database instance. So the status is still creating. On the connectivity and security tab, you can view your endpoint information, your database port, and on the networking option, you'll see your availability zone, your VPC, your subnet, and your security groups. Now you don't have to worry too much about the subnets and the VPC because these will be taken care of by your security team more often than not. Once the database creation is completed, the status will be changed to available. So to ensure that you can connect to your database, under the security settings, select the VPC group, scroll down to the details section, select your security group, and in the inbound rules section, edit the inbound rules, and then add a role for your local machine or whichever IP you are connecting from. For the type, it's going to be Oracle and it automatically fills in the 1521 range. And for the source option, I'm going to select my IP so it automatically fills out this box and specify my current IP address. Then select save rule. In order to connect to your instance, you're going to need your port, 
the database endpoint and the admin user and password. In the next lecture, we'll be taking a look at how you can connect to your database.